Folks, you've heard us talk about the TNT show, Major Crimes, one of my favorites. It's the uh, spinoff from The Closer. We have a great actress on with us now. We've been chasing her for a little bit. It's great to see she get their day off. Uh, Karen Giovanni, how are you, ma'am? Hey, good, thanks. How are you? Well, congrats. We're in order. Season four headed your way. It's exciting times. Woo-hoo! Yes, we're really excited. It just um, takes so much pressure off shooting the whole rest of the season when you know that uh, it's not the end and you get to come back and do it all again next year. So It, it is. Forward. It is, and it's, uh, it is great to see the life continue. What is it, in your opinion, about major crimes that has been the most rewarding? Oh, the most rewarding, gosh. Um, you know what? When I first got the script um, and I, I read it and I knew of the closer and I'd watched it and I saw what was written for Amy Sykes, um, for me as an actor, especially as an African-American actor, I thought to myself, this is exactly what I've been waiting for. Uh, it's a show with real people um, that are of every different color, race, nationality, female, male, that are just people coming together for the greater good, trying to you know, solve these cases, and nothing about it is a stereotypical um, character. And James, Jeff, and, and the rest of the writers have really brought that to life. You know, it's, it's so wonderful to watch a show and to be part of a show that people watch and say, wow, there's someone that looks like me that's doing this wonderful job that's really, you know, there's no, there's no um, pretense to them. They're just there doing their jobs, you know, running straight into danger for other people, and they're just a person, and they happen to be this, that, and the other. Um, so for me, I feel like James really hit the ball out of the park um, with every character on the show, and I'm just proud to be part of the group. What was it about your personality that helped you connect with Amy? Um, Amy is a people pleaser, and so am I. <laughs> I'm a, <laughs> I, I am. I would be, I was that annoying child with my hand up first, with you know, always just whatever I could do to please everyone else, and uh, always trying to get ahead. And I think that kind of. Um, you know, she's she's a worker bee, and I'm the same way. You know, she's always trying to figure it out and find a way and work her way through it, and uh, same here. Um, so, yeah, that, that aspect of Amy, that kind of do-gooder personality, that um, which could be looked at as annoying, but in the end, it, 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 it'll always serve you well, is how I always felt about it. It's never going to, it's going to be a bad thing to work really hard, right? So... Um, that I really connect with her uh, with. And her strength, you know, I'm not as strong as Amy is. I'm, I'm much weaker. But um, I admire how strong I've written her. You know, they write her really tough, and uh, and I love that. So. so you might get a couple episodes where you don't have to be all tough and tumble every minute, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we laugh a lot. Look at the, look at the um, you know, all the, what's, the, what's the guy that was on there with the, oh, gosh, what's his name? Um he was on the closer as well. I cannot think of the character's name right now, but he um, it plays this crazy, ridiculous guy that thinks that he's a police officer, but he's clearly not. And oh, right, right. Um, oh my God, it's hysterical, and we just get to laugh. And you know, I say things like canine vomit, and you know, of course, like you've got all of it is real. Is real. Every case that we have kind of comes from um, something that's happened. Uh, in one of our producers' careers as a police officer with the LAPD. So, um, you know, there there's funny ones and there's really, really gut-wrenching, horrifying ones, and that's kind of the reality of, of police work as well. So, And I think is that, isn't that not what separates the show from other crime dramas in, in, you know, CSIs or whatever, which, you know, have been around and they've done their thing, but yours is definitely more of... Um, semi-autobiographical, you know, from the producer's standpoint. I mean, you know, it's like he's using his real-life experiences to show you the roller coaster ride of what these folks are going through. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, I think that's what keeps us going is that there's, you know, with with crime, they start, it starts to repeat itself, right? I mean, it, it eventually there's the characters are new, but the crimes, you kind of go, oh, I've seen that happen before. And you don't have anything to latch on to that really keeps you going, oh, what's going to happen to that person? Mm-hmm. And so what they've done is make everyone a person, not just a cop, not just solving. The crime is not 
always the most important thing. Our lives are. And so I think people really tune in, A, because, you know, crime and cop and procedural shows are just super interesting, and B, um, they've got, you know, a life of whoever they're following, whether it be, you know, Rusty Storyline or GW or myself or whoever, that they can really kind of latch onto and wonder, oh, wow, I wonder how they feel about that case. You'll, you'll know it. It's written. You'll see it. Um, and, uh, and about each other and about our family lives and why we are the way we are. I think that's definitely 100% why um, people love the show. Can you give us any hints on uh, how Amy will change over the course of the rest of season three or any little story arc hints at things that uh, really kind of uh, really bring her to different levels? Um, you know, we've, we've caught up pretty much to, I mean, we're, we're filming 10 right now, and I think we just aired six or seven. So we're almost, um, storyline-wise, we're not too far off from where we are now, so as far as Script-wise, you know, we don't get script the script until the probably a day or two before we do the read-through of each episode. So I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, I am hoping that um, you know you'll see more of her kind of life with um, with Malcolm, mm-hmm. um, who plays her boyfriend on the show, and you'll kind of see that relationship. Um, and ho- I mean, I'm hoping honestly that you know, all of the fruit of her labor will eventually pay off, and then she she will have more of a leadership role um, in, in the squad. But uh, I have no idea what is up James' sleeve, so um, I, I can only, one can only guess. I have no idea. No problem, no problem. And you have a just an interesting resume of work that, uh, you know, first off, let me just touch on briefly, because there's another show that we've talked about a lot here, and that is uh, Beauty and the Beast, and you had a great great role um, playing opposite, um, you know, Brian White's, Joe Bishop's character, the police captain there. And I'd love to see you come back for another uh, another episode or two and flush out some stuff. Um, what, what what was it like? Or how is it different with the CW show compared to the TNT show? Um, you know, I wasn't there for that long, honestly. And uh, it was, which is so funny. Did you know that Brian White was um, played the, one of the DAs on our show this season. On, right, right. Yeah, so funny. So, um, you, know, you know, I wasn't there that long. It was on our time off, and I had like a month off in January, um, and so I, I hopped up to Canada in the middle of January, which is very cold. And uh, that's probably the only difference. It was very cold. Um, and, uh, you know, it's funny because we shot so much more than they used. Well, so there was a lot of that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with Tess, that they ended up making it not so aggressive. That's what they went for, a not so aggressive take on meeting her for the first time, so that I think they left it a, the possibility of her coming back a little more open. Um, but, yeah, I don't, the difference, I would say, um, you know, the I, I, I'm not sure how they're doing the show now. I know that when it, I had done it, it was a, a lot more cop-based and not as much, um, you know, character-based, except for kind of the Beast and you know, Beauty and the Beast characters. And I think now, as far as I've heard, is that it's a little bit more character-based and a little less copy. Um, so uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I would love to. I would love to go back, you know, on the time off and, and kind of bring that back out and see what, what's going on over there. But uh, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. Who knows? Let me let me touch on briefly because you come from a uh, you know the uh, daytime drama soap uh, field as well, which is a, you know always fascinating um, the the difference of what it's like. You know, you run one life to live as uh, Dr. Vivian Wright, and how put in put in your words, how busy is it to try to keep up with the production schedule on a soap? So I have to say that during the three years that I did that show, I did I was recurring. I did that show during the day, and I did that Broadway show at night. Yeah. So for three years. So um, luckily, I will say, like, knock on wood, it's one of my like everyone has a skill, right? Like an actory skill. Like some people are great criers. Some people are great at whatever. One of my luckily back pocket skills is that I can memorize lines. Like if I read them once, I can memorize them. So um, luckily there's a lot of dialogue and not a lot of time for you to learn it. You know, you'll get pages and pages. And I mean, 
paragraphs of information that you go, are you kidding me? Like, how am I going to memorize all this? Um, so that is probably the hardest part of so of acting. Um, you know, they, they have it all, they, it's, it's a business that's been around a really long time, so they know what they're doing, and they have it all worked out, and their, their shooting schedule, somehow you look at it and you go, how does that make sense? And somehow it just does. I mean, <laughs> it is a well-oiled machine, and they know exactly what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I, one of the things I just, I went to work, I did my work, it was like boot camp for acting. You know, you learn to work very quickly, very efficiently, um, and come in with doing it exactly, you know, there's not a lot of time for direction. So you really have to come in with all of your choices made, the reason that you've made them, and just do it, which is, you know, that's such great training to not have to say, well, you know, help me with this. You really have to just make the decisions yourself. So good training. So three years of chaos, uh, adjusting that with an incredible resume of Broadway work. You you miss some of the Broadway work? Um, you know, I miss um I could say I miss the work. I don't miss the life of Broadway. It's very hard. It's a hard it's you know, even though this is a lot of hours, it's it's still a normal human job. You know, you, you work a lot of hours. You do Monday through Friday, but you always have a weekend. You always have a holiday off. Um for the most part, you know, we have Christmas and New Year's and everything offers on Broadway, you know, I worked every Christmas Every New Year's, every Thanksgiving, every every holiday that everybody else was off, I went to work. And I worked really hard because there were extra shows because, you know, all the tourists were in. So, um, yeah, do I miss being on stage? Do I miss dancing? Do I miss um, kind of full body acting, which you don't always get to do in TV? It's very, um, you know, a piece of your hand here, a piece of your face here, you know, spliced together kind of. Yeah, I miss, um, you know, knowing that my whole body is getting seen. Um, makes sense for me, and no, you know, just being able to sing and dance. But uh, I much prefer this uh, lifestyle. Some film aspirations that uh, you still have? Film aspirations? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think um, I think that's going to depend on how long this show kind of goes for. I just can't see doing 19 episodes, and then on the couple of months we have off, which are basically over the Christmas and, and Thanksgiving holidays going and shooting a movie. I mean, I would just be exhausted. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe when this show ends in another, hopefully, five more years or four more years, um, I, yeah, I would love to. I would love to do to do a film or two or three or um, whatever. I'm, I definitely, I learned from Hugh Jackman, say yes to everything and, and figure it out later. And so that's kind of what I do. I just... <laughs> That's his motto. He's like, you know what I learned? I learned just say yes to everything and figure it out. And so that's what I do. I'll just figure it out later. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's jump off of that then because obviously the superhero genre is bigger than ever. So is there a superhero character you're like, hey, when that comes around, though, I, I could play her. Oh, my gosh. I would love to play a superhero. Are you kidding me? Of course. Um, I, yeah, I don't uh, – I have no – idea of what superhero I would play. Maybe I'll do the reincarnation of Storm or something since she's uh, busy with her TV show. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, God, that would be amazing. I think there'd be, I mean, I I think there'd be, a, there'd be a great you. spot for you in the Wonder Woman franchise. I would agree with you. That would be, that would be pretty awesome, right? And then, yes. and then my kids could see it. It would be awesome. No, I would totally... Yeah. Totally love to do that. I'm a gymnast. I have you know do aerial work and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, I'd fall right into place with that. Like now, your your girls are pretty young. How old are your girls? Uh, they're four and six. Oh my goodness! So let's we have yeah. to have it. We have to have confession time. We'll have to get some theme music <laughs> that we'll dub over this. How many times have you watched Frozen? Oh gosh. Um, the ooh, the over okay. under is about 172. Just so you know. Yeah, I'm going to go with 212. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, my God, you have no idea. I mean, just, in, just when it was at the El Capitan, which is like the huge, beautiful Disney theater down here on um, Hollywood, I saw it four times and went to the sing-along with both of them wearing costumes. And then, we, I mean, we've seen it so many times. Obviously, we own it. We And then it, my little one had a, a frozen birthday party on it. Oh, she did. Came and sang. Oh, and she did. Oh, my goodness. No, no, you have no idea. We still... Oh, I do, though. I have girls. We have girls. Oh, you do? Okay, oh, all right. We have girls. Oh, no, everywhere. Well, my, my youngest is 12, but you'd be oh. shocked from the teen group. 
how much they're still affected by the film. Okay, you, you've done Lion King on stage, so you understand. Lion <laughs> King is the is probably was their biggest impactful franchise. You know, from that right. point, Lion King Lion King lasted for what three years. I mean, it was just incredible. Yeah. So this is the first time we've gone through this again. And I try to tell people, says most anyone that has any any girls that are remotely that they're in, but the teens are amazingly affected. Well, I always ask, so I just yeah, I'm. Oh, you're yeah, not, yeah. You're, you're, when we went to the sing along, there were two girls in front of us that were probably around twelve, thirteen years old that were dressed in full frozen like t-shirt bows, singing along to the entire thing, even doing the the dialogue, not just the songs that were a hundred percent into it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, luckily, I love Disney. I mean, I've done The Lion King. I did Tarzan and, you know, now this and whatever. And I also worked on an ABC show and got, you know, tickets to Disney World. And so I'm I'm totally into it, too. I'm totally, like, 100% totally fine with them watching it all the time. Um, but they're just from a point where you're like, okay. I haven't hit the wall yet, but I could see in another couple months. Um, I may hit a frozen wall. <laughs> well, you know, they're going to add Frozen to Once Upon a Time. Oh, really? I did uh, not know that. Yeah, so I have to, have to uh, forward that email to you. Yes, if you look that up, they just cast, uh, they're adding Elsa and Anna and Kristoff. They'll be on season four and season four. We just spoke to Raphael. Oh, my Park. goodness. You know, they've really done a really good job of kind of bringing the adult audience into it, too. You know, that's such a great idea because... See, you're hooked, too. They're brilliant, aren't they? Yep, they are. Yeah, see, we got it. Karen and uh, Giovanni's hooked too. We got everybody on my. Uh -huh. can, can I? How, how addicted are you? Can I get you to sing a little? Let it go, because I know you can sing. Snow goes night on the mountain tonight. Not a footprint to be seen. A kingdom of isolation, and it looks like I'm the queen. Oh yeah, I sing and it all the time. Fantastic. I know you do. I know you do. All these, all these. <laughs> it's so funny, though, because my kids, like, I sing all the time. I sing in the car. I sing in the house. I sing everything. And they hate it when I sing. Mom, stop singing. It doesn't matter. I'm like, you guys know I, I got paid, like, for a very long time for singing. Like, that's what I do. And they're like, Mom, seriously, stop singing. They but, actually But they'll get you a gig. It. They'll get you a gig. Like, it'll be five years from now, and they'll get you a gig where you have to be in Frozen 3 and you'll be oh playing the character, and you'll be singing, and they'll be like, Mom's, my mom's the greatest, she's the greatest actress ever, she's, because you know why I know that? Because every time I talk to someone who's had this long career, and they finally get, like, the a job in one of these superhero movies, now they're cool. Every oh, yeah. Every right, wait, story. Wait. Yep. Well, when they can help tell their friends, like, and their friends go, wow, that's so cool, your mom does that, or whatever, yeah. then I'll be cool again. Right now, I'm not so, I'm not so cool. I'm, I'm definitely, like, annoying singing mom now i have to just wait till they leave and then i can sing when they're not in the house oh well we, we it's all a have, phase. We all i'm the hoping same. it's a phase we all have the same problems it's amazing yeah it uh -huh. is fantastic to finally get a chance to talk to you karen and i'm so pleased that major crimes is headed our way for season four and we get to jump right in folks we're about we're not quite halfway right i think we're how many episodes we have in season three uh, 19, 19, I think, 19, yeah. Um, 19, yeah, and I think we're um up to, I think we've aired up, up to episodes. Seven? Yeah, it started, it started June 9th, so that's, we're probably on week five or six, so yeah, right. we're still. We'll air up until 10, and then we'll do a little hiatus to always do, and then we'll air the back nine um, around Thanksgiving, Christmas time. Right. And I'll get to wear my Christmas sweaters and Christmas pins again, because Amy has a secret obsession with Christmas. Of course. So. It's fantastic. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> it is great to talk to you and folks. Thank you. Guys. It is on TNA, TNT, Monday nights at 9. You definitely want to be tuning in, Major Crimes. And uh, we'll be following her. We'll link to your Facebook, Twitter, and all that kind of stuff. I'll track you down, make sure we, folks can get awesome. to that and follow that. And uh, just hope you have some good time with your family. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay,